Let's look at the posting periods in SAP FI module. Posting periods are defined during the fiscal year variant. If you remember a few presentations back, when we created fiscal year variants, we defined the number of posting periods and the number of special periods. Posting periods means it's a posting month. In SAP, we'll be using the term periods instead of months. And for each 12 months of a year, we have the 12 posting periods. And any adjustment postings we will be doing towards end of a quarter or end of a year, we will be putting that in the special periods. Now just like we defined a fiscal year variant, we need to define a posting period variant. This will, uh, this will ensure which periods can be open or closed and the same posting period can be used by different company codes. Now let's look at the configuration of the posting period variants. The SAP configuration menu path for posting period is Financial Accounting New, Financial Accounting Global Settings New, Ledgers, Fiscal Year and Posting Periods, Posting Periods and Define Variants for Open Posting Periods. The short transaction code for this is OBBO. So let's execute this transaction and define our own variant for posting period. As you can see, there are already many variants in the system. Now we will create our own variant. So click on New Entries and give it a name. I'm just going to type in Posting Period Variant 1. Just give it, you can just give any description over here. And click on Save. Press Continue with the Transport Request and you have created a posting period variant. Now you need to assign this to your company code. So that's the next step. Assign variants to company code. Direct transaction code for this is OBBP. So let's execute that transaction. And find your company code. Now I will assign to the company code Z123. So I can key in my posting period variant here. Now similarly you can assign for many company codes the same posting periods as you can see in this example. Different company codes are all using the same posting period variants. Just like we discussed earlier in our chapters variants so you can use one variant and all the other objects can use the same variants. This helps for easy maintenance. Now let's save this. Press OK to continue. So now we have created the posting period variant. Now we have assigned to our company code. Next step is to open and close the posting periods. That is over here. Open and close posting periods. Transaction code for this is OB52. Okay. As you can see, there are many posting period variants already have been assigned. And you can see over here, for example, there is a plus icon ADKS. So plus means it's for all type of accounts. A is for asset accounts. D is for customer accounts, K is for vendor accounts, and S is for general ledger accounts. So here you can define your GL account number range and say and you can say for which GL account number range which periods can be open. As you can see from here, you can have up to two period intervals. So this is your first period interval. In this example it's from period one two thousand nine to period twelve two thousand nine. And you can have a second interval, period 13, 2005, period 16, 2005. So when they say period 13, that's your special period. Anything more than 12 is called your special periods. And as we saw earlier, you can have up to maximum of four special periods. So usually in this setting, 
you assign a normal posting period range in the first range and a special period posting in the second range. This column AUGR is for authorization group. Now for example, you might have in your company for the last, you have, you are on the 3rd of October. On the 30th of September, you have closed your books for that month. That means all your no more financial entries for September. But you had still kept, you had need to post some entry in 30th of September. But you are already on the 3rd of October. And you only want to give it to a few set of users to access to post in a already closed month. In that scenario, you can create an authorization group over here and assign the users to this group. And this column controls the, give, gives access to those in this period range. Let me tell that again. Imagine you want to give access to only a certain set of users to post in this period interval. You can type in an authorization group over here. For example, like that. And you can assign the users to this authorization group. This can be done by the basis team or your SAP administrator team. So all the users who are assigned to this group only will have access to post to this period range from 1 2009 to 12 2009. Now let's copy an existing variant to our new one. So I'm just selecting this A for assets, D for customers, K for vendors, M for material, S for GL accounts and I'm going to click on the copy as icon. I'm going to replace this with the posting period variant which we have just created now. ZPP1. Just typing it in over here all the way to all the account ranges. Okay. Now if this left is left blank and this is all ZZZ, it means all the accounts under this will come. Now if you only want to limit another set of accounts, you can put 100,000 to 1999 and then have another set 1,900,000 to ZZZZ. So you can have different, different number ranges over here. And here you can have up to two number ranges. So let me see, I'm going to create a number range from 1, 2010 to 12, 2018. Okay. And this we have just kept as 13, 2010 and 2020. Here also you can change whatever numbers you want. You can even put like this. 12, let's say you only want the users to be posting to 2018, 12th period, change it like this, okay, this means only the period of 12 of 2018 fiscal year is open and the special periods from 13, 2010 to 16, 2020. Now I can also change this like this from period 1, 2019. Now you can see I have opened up the period 12, 2018 to 12, 2018 for all the accounts and period 1, 2019 to period 1, 2019. So I have only opened two periods over here. And if I give an authorization group, for example, like this, this means the users who belong to this AA11 group 
can are the only ones who have access to post to this period range. They can anyone can post under the, this period range that is 1 2009 to 1 2009, but only the users who are assigned to AA11 group have access to post to 12 2018 to 12 2018 period range. So this basically is the posting periods screen where you define which periods are open. We saw the configuration of open and closing posting periods and we saw the transaction OB52 where you actually go and define which periods are going to be open and closed. Now to having this setting to ensure that which periods are open is to allow to make sure that users do not post to the wrong period. For example, if you have already closed last month's period, you can define which then the next month should be open. So this will prevent users from incorrectly posting to last month. That's basically the main reason why we have opening and closing of the posting periods. Now we have the option of having two intervals to open periods. We, just, we saw earlier you can have two number ranges, two period ranges to be open. And this authorization group at the end controls which users have access to post to this first period range. And all this you can specify your GL account range. For example, if you have your assets, you can specify the asset account number range which can be open and you can have another asset account range saying which can be closed. So that's basically the main reason why you have this ADKMS account groups. So just like we mentioned earlier, A is for assets, B is for customers, K is for vendors, M is for materials, S is for general ledgers. Now let's look at the tolerance group. Tolerance group is a setting given for employees a maximum tolerance amount. So what is the meaning of this tolerance? The tolerance means in SAP terminology the maximum amounts users can post for any document, the maximum open item amount the users can post for a document, the maximum cash discounts amount they can give in a document, the differences between revenue payments and expense payments and in terms of amount and percentages and cash discount amounts. So the tolerance group mainly identifies the permitted differences and the maximum amounts can be posted in a document. Thus again the tolerance group identifies the maximum amount you can be posted in a document just specified over here. The maximum amount per open item that is for a customer or a vendor open item basically that means an invoice numbering, invoice amount that's mentioned over here. The maximum cash discount for each line item so in this example is 10 percent, the previous example is 1 million and the permitted payment differences for revenue and expenses. For example, you might receive an invoice for revenue of $2,000 but the payment you might be making is only 1800 so there's $200 differences that is acceptable because you have specified the maximum amount is 1000 over here. Same way you can also give a percentage of the differences. Also you can also give a cash discount adjustments. And then you define this tolerance group, you have to give a tolerance group ID for your company code and you can assign the users to that tolerance group. Now let's look at the configuration for the tolerance group. Let's look at the configuration path to define the tolerance groups for employees. Financial accounting new, financial accounting global settings new, document, tolerance groups, define tolerance groups for employees. The short transaction code for this is OBA4. So let's execute the transaction. Okay, now we can define our own tolerance group. For example, I'm going to click on new entries. Call it ZEM1. Put in my company code. And here I can give the maximum amount and minimum amount of the document postings. So I'm giving this as 1 million. 
this is totally up to your company's policy and you can have up to different groups also for your employees for example if you're in a retail environment and you don't have a large item of sale for example it might only run to a few hundreds of dollars then for those employees who will be dealing with those invoices you can put a tolerance group for them separately and give a maximum amount of maybe ten thousand dollars or even one thousand dollars so it's, you can have up to many different tolerance groups for a different set of employees you are in, if you are in an environment where you deal with large amounts of documents then you can have a different set of tolerance group for those employees and you can increase the amount to ten million dollars or in hundred million dollars you can go up to more than a billion dollars so you have enough and more amount numbering available so remember this is the maximum upper limit posting for a document and for a line item so you know a document can have up to many line items so that's why you have the document separate amount level and a line item a separate amount level if the line items exceed maybe 12 document 12 line items and they are all those line items are adding up to more than 10 million then it won't allow to post because you have a control at the document level now here i'm just going to give 5% cash discount per line item that's the maximum cash discounts users can give in their invoices so permitted payment differences so this will tell you what's the differences you can the users are allowed to post uh, between revenue and expense invoices or postings so i'm just going to give a maximum amount difference is hundred dollars give it a five percent difference hundred dollars five percent so this will the precedence will take whatever is lower so sometimes five percent might be lower than hundred dollars so then that will only take precedence can save the transaction and press ok to continue the save data and let's go back now here you can assign now you have created the tolerance group next step is to assign the users to this tolerance group so the transaction code for this is OB57 that's a short transaction code let's execute it in the menu path now here you can assign these users we even create the new users who are already there in the system bring them to the screen over here and assign the tolerance groups so we have just created one now, our tolerance group. EM1, and I'm putting it over here. Similarly, I can copy this and put to different different users also. And save the transaction. So that's how you define a tolerance group and assign the users to the tolerance group. It's basically a way of controlling the maximum amount a user can post in a document or line item the maximum cash discounts amounts the users can give that means your employees who can give to the other customers or vendors and also any differences between revenue and expense postings you can specify it in amount or percentages let's recap of what we have discussed before we saw how to open and close posting periods we saw how to define a posting period variant assign it to a company code in opening and closing peri posting periods, we can do it by account types. That is your customer, vendor, asset, material, and general ledger accounts. And you can as assign the number range for each of those GL account types. And the period intervals, you can have up to two posting period intervals. Most likely, the companies use one for the current period and one for previous period, or one for the current period and one for special periods. And you can have a, have an authorization group. These are the last column in that open and post closing period screen, which controls the first period range interval that gives users access to the first period range postings. And we saw we assigned the company code to the posting period. And we saw tolerance groups, how we can define tolerance group for different set of employees. Then we can assign the employees to those tolerance groups. Tolerance group mainly controls the upper limit of postings for a document, for a line item, the maximum cash discount, and the permitted posting differences for revenue and expense postings. Now for your assignment, copy an existing posting period, or you can even create your own new posting period, give it a name, assign it to a company code, then you can create its own posting period intervals. This is much easier if you just copy a standard one from SAP and then give it change it to your posting period name 
and you can define your own period intervals. Next step, try and create a new tolerance group for employees. You can create up to many groups as you want. Give the maximum upper limit for document, line item, cash discount, revenue and expense permitted differences. Then assign the tolerance group to your user ID. So you have some practice. That's about discussing and uh, configuring posting periods and tolerance groups.